listening to Give God 90, where we're not afraid of the tough biblical questions, because we will dig through the language, the culture, and the history to find the truth revealed in the words of our Creator. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for letting me be part of your day. My name is Jerry Mitchell, your host for Give God 90. Myra is not here this evening. She is uh, out doing some of the things that she does best, uh, assisting a dear friend of ours with some things that she needs to take care of. So I am unsupervised. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's right. I am I'm supervised, and uh, <laughs> hopefully I won't be sorry for that. So, <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes... Uh, the things, uh, the, the things we find ourselves doing, is kind of amazing, and it's it's quite different sometimes. Uh, like right now, I am trying to make sure by myself that all the technology is supposed to be working the way it's supposed to be working. So, it seems to be. Uh, so we'll kind of get started here, and um, I want to remind you, <clears throat> the website is there for your convenience. Lots of good stuff. Uh, Videos on there, I think, are kind of interesting. There is a series on there from Matthew uh, chapter 5, 6, and 7. Um, make sure that you check out uh, the books. Oh, if you, by the way, have a free Spreaker account, uh, you can see that Myra is listening in. She just left a message on the chat board. Uh, which reminds me of a text message I got a while ago. <clears throat> Husband, you'll appreciate this. Uh, she texted me and said, I will listen to you. And I had to laugh. And husbands, you know what I mean. Wives, you know what I mean too. When a wife says, I will listen to you, she put the stipulation on it. I meant I will listen to your podcast. So you can uh, share in that chat if you would like, uh, if you have that free Spreaker account. That way when you know you push the, the little chat button from where, whatever podcast you're listening on, it will take you right there and you can leave a message. And it doesn't have to be live when we do that, by the way. You can leave us a message anytime. <clears throat> uh, the existing books, Tradition of Truth, God's Universe, God's Rules, are out there for you folks who... Want them? Share them with your friends, share them with your family, share them with your enemies because they need it too. Uh, don't forget, <clears throat> if you would, uh, hit those like buttons, share buttons, give us that you know five star rating, whatever it is. Hit the notification bell. You don't have to pay any attention to it, but what it does is it bumps us up in each of the platforms, so more and more people can hear us. If you like what you're hearing. That is a free, cheap, and easy way to make sure other people hear it too. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have mentioned before a uh, young lady that would uh, use some that is able to use some assistance. Um, folks, she really does. She, you know, her the the kids that she cares for need to go to school. That's not always free. Uh, the biggest thing that's keeping them out right now is uniforms. So, if you can give her any assistance, let us know. We will make sure that uh, everything gets taken care of that way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I have talked before about the way we process information. And not to beat the dead horse, so to speak. But this is important. You need to understand that the information that you receive is not always factual. And that sometimes, <laughs> you know, it doesn't really come as a surprise to anybody anymore, I don't think. However, you, if you're like anybody else in the world, chances are, when you hear something from someone you trust, you put more credit on that information than you would if it's somebody you don't know. 
So the problem is now more than ever, understanding that what we see and what we hear and having the ability to discern fact from fiction is far more important right now than ever before in history. There is, in the world right now, a huge battle for your trust. And when I say a huge battle for your trust, it is a, a, a knockdown, drag out fight for your trust. And I'm not just talking about uh, putting your faith or your trust in the Creator. That's not what I'm looking at. And not entirely, anyway. I I'm talking about what information you believe, what you trust as it pertains to things going on in the world right now. And yeah, things like COVID, but that's not the only one, right? <clears throat> There's a lot of things going on uh, all over the world. There are things going on. And you need to know uh, what immediate action you need to take, if any, to ensure the safety of yourself and your family and the people around you. Now, it's, it's easy to look at the whole COVID debate, right? For the past two years, We've been told things that sound good and, and we've been told things that we want to believe. We've been told things that we know are true. We've been told things that are extremely suspect in their truth. And we know that we've been told things that are probably not true. But all of that has the uh, effect to change the way we live. And I don't know of anyone living on the planet that has not had to adapt the way they live to fit around this COVID formula in some way or another. Uh, to some extent, the COVID conversation has caused some of us to think about their spiritual life, maybe prophecy, how it's being fulfilled right in front of our eyes. We've looked at things like the mark of the beast and we wonder if there's a you know, is the vaccine the mark? There was that debate going on. We uh, look at the vaccine passport and we say, oh, is that the mark? And a lot of people have been making a lot of money selling books and videos about these kind of things, right? They've been putting it out there and say, oh, this is it because of this. This is it because of that. It can't be this because of that. All of these things are battling for your trust. Um, now, we really, let me take a second. We have to ask if the vaccine passports the mark. I was, I've spoken to this before. <clears throat> How does it pertain to the whole prophetic picture, the whole prophetic outcome? And, and we can see that all around the world, the vaccine, the vaccine passports are being abandoned. Great Britain did away with theirs today. Today. No more mask mandate, no more vaccine passport. It's over in, in Great Britain. And rightfully and thankfully so. You know, let's face it, they're not the mark. Right? But these things we know don't work. We've had two years to see if they work. They don't work. We know that now. It's it's pretty you know, empirical evidence is overwhelming, especially when it slaps you in the face every day. Something that everybody can see, it's out there in front of you, but some still choose not to believe it. Um you know there's there's Papers that are being written for legit by legitimate researchers. And some of these papers simply compile information that has already been report 
reported and recorded by the agencies responsible for compiling information. There are medical journals who are refusing to include certain papers because they don't fit the narrative they want to be they want them to fit. That is a story today out of an Israeli newspaper. Uh, <clears throat> just because the narrative in the research doesn't fit, they rejected the entire paper written by a group of people, not just Israelis. Either. These were people from all over the world. Here's the really sad part. In the United States, there are still hospitals that refuse life-saving treatment to sick patients based on the false narrative that was established. But, you know, in other nations around the world, doctors are absolutely free. Hi, Jennifer. I see you checked in. There's Carol checking in. Thank you. In other nations around the world, doctors are free to treat you know, their sick patients with protocols that actually work. Now, I'm not just talking about COVID here. I'm talking about a lot of different, a lot of different diseases. Currently, we, I heard about this this morning. It's just heartbreaking. There are, there's someone who uh, was in the hospital in Minnesota. Uh, the person was on a ventilator. <clears throat> uh, and last week, the hospital made the decision that they were going to uh, take this person off the ventilator. And they were going to then uh, treat their medical needs. Well, if their medical needs happens to be a coffin, that's fine. Thankfully, the, the, the man's wife contacted a lawyer to intervene. And uh, the, the hospital was issued a, I'm going to call it a stay of execution. Uh, they were told they couldn't take the fellow off the ventilator. They were able to fly this person to a Texas hospital and that the, the location and the hospital are not being uh, publicized yet. That gentleman is currently recovering and, and he's not just recovering from his disease. He's recovering from malpractice and mistreatment. You see, there is a battle for your trust should you trust the word of man or are you going to trust the word of our creator, the sacred word of our creator at that? <clears throat> the news all over the world, you know, and, and a lot of my regular listeners know that I go through a lot of websites every morning from all over the world, different news sites. Uh, some of them include the Buenos Aires Times. There's a surprise for some of you. Uh, the DW from Germany. Eric Shevitz from Israel, College Times from the United Arab Emirates, the Monitor from Uganda, the Nation from Kenya, just some of the papers that I look at from all over the world, they're free. You can go to those websites and you can look at them too. But there's a big reason I do that. You see, when we restrict ourselves to one source, how do we know what to believe? With one source, you don't know. That's going to be important in a second. If you go to a doctor, and the doctor says, you need surgery, are you going to go find a second opinion? Or are you going to trust one source? Hopefully, you're going to do what's right. If somebody you know and you trust tells you oh you've just got to trust Jesus he'll take care of it while that person's life is a complete and total mess are you going to believe them? when somebody tells you here drink this whatever the this might be it'll make you feel better how do you know you're not going to have a negative reaction to that? Yet every day, 
people choose to do these things without even considering the long-term consequences or the long-term benefits. People are looking for immediate satisfaction no matter what the cost. Have a pain? Take a pill. Does it matter what caused the pain to begin with? Who cares? I just want to feel better, right? You know, when the neighbor's dog's barking, do you look to see why that dog's barking? Or do you just yell out the window, shut up, and then complain about the dog? You see, we've been trained to accept certain information, even if the information we receive isn't factual. We have forgotten how to discern information to make sure that what we see, what we hear, is real. Think about this. If you go to the bank and the bank tells you that all of a sudden you have $10 million in the bank and you know that you only have $10 in the bank, will you choose to believe the bank and and look at the teller and say, well, can I cash a check? Right? Please, let me cash a check. Discerning the facts and processing information is how we understand the way the world really works. You see, we don't have the luxury of living in a fantasy world any longer. Hopefully, you would say to the person at the bank, well, there must be a mistake. I know there's not $10 million in my account, as much as I want there to be. Would you be honest with yourself and with the bank? Hopefully, you would at least look out the window to see if there was a problem that was making the dog bark to start with. You know, is your neighbor needing some help? Is there something going on in the neighborhood that needs to be attended to? And really, hopefully, if you're hurting, you would want to know what the source of the pain is to get real long-lasting relief to so that you know you it doesn't keep coming back as the medicine wears off hopefully you get a second opinion from another certified doctor maybe a specialist if somebody said you need surgery hopefully you would be proactive when a family member's in the hospital hopefully you would choose to verify information you receive before you decide to make a life-changing decision. You know, there's a a very short but eh, semi-complex statement about this in the Bible. Meyer's not here to read tonight, but in Genesis 24, 62 and 63, uh, we read, Now Isaac had just returned from Bir Lachairoi, I said that wrong. It's Birl Hairoi, for he was living in the Negev. Early in the evening, Isaac went out to the field to meditate, and looking up, he saw the camels approaching. What is so important about that little passage and what I'm talking about? The word meditate doesn't mean to pray, doesn't mean to seek counsel or anything like that. The word used here in this is only used one time in the entire Hebrew Bible Uh, the word uh, suach if you're keeping score here it's Strong's number 7742 and it's very closely related to another word shuach which is Strong's number, oddly enough, 7743, because they're spelled exactly the same. But when we compare the two words, we're given an illustration. You see, the the word suach means to muse over something, where the word shuach means to sink down. Spelled exactly the same. Two different contextual meanings. 
the illustration we're given is that Isaac goes out by himself. He needs to sit down. He needs to collect his thoughts and get himself clear about what's going on around him. What's happening in his life? <clears throat> Isaac knew he needed more than one source. But Isaac's sources weren't far from him. Isaac understood that he needed to allow his heart and his mind to see the whole picture so that they could either agree or disagree. When your heart and your mind agree, you know that what you're seeing and what you're hearing is most likely true and factual. When your heart and your mind disagree and there's a struggle, <clears throat> chances are it's fiction, it's false, it's not reality. Now, I've used the, the description before of the magician, you know, where your heart wants to be entertained. It wants to be tricked. But your mind knows that what you're watching is nothing more than an illusion. It's, it's fiction. It's not real. <clears throat> your heart and your mind don't agree. So, the, you know, the magician's tricks that are fiction aren't real. It's not something that can actually happen. That's the approach we need to apply to ourselves today when we watch what's going on in the world around us. We need to take that time to say, okay, my heart sees this. I want it to be real. My brain looks at it and says, well, wait a minute. Is that the way it really is? Is is this the reality? Maybe. But they need to come together. Sometimes they need more information. They need real information. <clears throat> you know, what's going on today is kind of like watching a magician, isn't it? Some of the... Uh, <laughs> some of the uh, some of the experts the supposedly experts are are more like trusted pharmaceutical magicians now if you if you look at the bible in the original language you'll you'll hear the sarcasm in that you'll understand it because in the original language it's all fantasy anyway. You know, they're supposed to be the experts. You know, they were the ones who were supposed to make things better, not worse. You see, it's the reason that some people who followed their heart and only their heart, their one source, were fooled by what they watched. But the people who allowed their heart and their mind to either agree or disagree, they're the ones who very quickly realized that what we're seeing in the world was not always reality, especially when it comes to the COVID debate. And it's the same way a lot of times the prophecy. The, the people who choose to think you know, the vaccine, the vaccine passports were the mark of the beast. They wanted to see prophecy fulfilled. They, they had a desire to see prophecy fulfilled, a prophecy that they were familiar with, something that had been uh, on television a lot. It's been in the movies a lot. It's been in books a lot. We were familiar with it. We wanted it to be fulfilled. But that's where the magicians knew that they could play you. The reality is completely different. The mark is exactly what we read it is. It's a mark. Something that we can physically see on the forehead or on the right hand. You see, when the heart leads us into deception, we overlook details. You know, little details like finishing the verse. 
or remembering details, like Jeremiah 17, 19. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? How many times have we heard that the heart is deceitful and people just stop? The heart is deceitful beyond cure. That's why you need more than that one source. No matter how much you want to believe something, you've got to incorporate what you know so that your mind and your heart can work together and either agree or disagree. The only only way I know to explain this is if you want something so bad that you're willing to deny information in front of you, what you want is probably not the best thing for you. Think about what we've learned over the last couple of years. Does it really make sense that a... (laughs) Does it really make sense that a virus that was more than likely developed in a lab setting okay can it continue outside of the parameters for which it was designed of course not if we believe that then then we must also believe that mankind has developed the ability to create something from nothing an ability that we will never possess you see all that we have is a virus It was probably manipulated, but outside of a laboratory, that virus will behave exactly like every other virus. It it can't think for itself. It can't do anything other than reproduce its own kind. Have you heard those words before? I hope. It, It can't magically become a bacteria. It can't do anything other than be a virus. And and we know that when that happens, as it reproduces, it's going to lose certain genetic information, just like every other organism on our planet. That's why evolution is impossible. Now, de-evolution, on the other hand, is what we witness in our fallen world. The loss of information is de-evolution. If you start out with one pair of, well, let's pick on dogs for a moment. If you start out with one pair of dogs, and they have all of the information at creation needed, so that all the breeds we have now come from that one pair, it will never be possible for one of the breeds we have now to ever gain the information which would be evolution to go back to the original pair. Everything has to lose information in order to wind up with the breeds that we have now. Hopefully I said that in a way that was understandable. The more information you lose, the farther from creation you are. If it went the other way, that would be evolution. But it's not. It works down, not up. It devolves. It doesn't evolve. No matter what the experts say, you know, when, their, when their laboratory experiments do not include creation-based information, nothing that they manufacture will actually work in the real world. Research is an important part of real science. I'm I'm not discrediting research at all. What we happen to have experienced over the last couple of years is someone who has never, to my knowledge, ever actually treated a real patient. They've been research scientists who have been attempting to, to apply research-based information in the real world. And if the research-based information is based on evolution and not creation, it will never, ever be effective in the real world.
It'll never do what they expect. It will never, ever have the outcome that they were looking for. You know, I, I kind of call it the Star Trek dilemma. You, you remember, if you're familiar with the show Star Trek, it, you know, based on science fiction, right? You, you can walk up to a computer and say, well, I want uh, a bowl of soup, and it will give you a bowl of soup. Something from nothing. The problem is, mankind will never be able to achieve that. Because somebody somewhere has to supply the material for what comes out of that computer. We cannot create something from nothing. Only our creator can do that. Part of the Star Trek dilemma is that man will become God with a little g. And that has happened to some degree. But does the information that man has become God cause your heart and mind to agree or disagree. See, man is made in the image of God. He cannot become God. Even the divine beings, other than the Creator Almighty Himself, other than Jehovah Himself, even the divine beings cannot magically become God. It's impossible. That would be evolution, and that's not the way heaven and earth are designed. You know, if you think that man cannot be a god to himself, eh, you, you might not be allowing your mind and your heart to come together because man can think he is his own God and that's part of the problem you see being made in the image means that we have the capability to act like him we have the ability to love like him we have other abilities to uh, do things that he would want us to do. But we don't have the ability to be him. What reality is, and we see this everywhere, is that man isn't satisfied being made in the image of God anymore. He wants something more. He wants something else. He wants something uh, that you know, he thinks he can control when the real reality is he needs to submit and be under the, the control of and the authority of his creator. He needs to learn to live the way the one who created him or her is designed to live. So what information will you believe? Do we choose to believe what we see and hear from one source? If it is, let that source be your Bible written in the original language because we know that the translations are corrupted. That's just a given. That's why we have to seek and search to find out the truth. Look for many sources among ourselves. Don't just trust your heart. It's deceitful. Don't just trust your mind because you know, basing uh, action on information, raw data, data, however you want to say that, without human input can get you into just as much trouble. 
you've got to have both. It has to work together. And the only way <laughs> the only way that can happen is something that I learned a long time ago. The the Hebrew word for one is echad. Simple, easy word, right? One. But the word for unity comes from that word. You have to add one letter. And echad becomes yachad. The yud happens to also be the first name, first letter in the name of God, Yehovah. You cannot have unity in the real world. Your heart and your mind cannot come together and be unified to see and discern and agree by themselves. You can't have the heart being one, echad, the mind being the other, echad, unless you bring them together with that first letter of the Almighty's name and let them unify so that they can work together in unity and give you the discernment that you need. And that's going to be different for everybody. I mean, there's not a one-size-fits-all right because what what somebody who might be listening in uh, Germany or Australia hears and what they need are going to be two completely different things and it's going to be different again from someone li listening in Alaska it's going to be different again from someone uh, listening in I believe Brazil was the furthest south we had the last couple of weeks so as as you folks out there are are trying to figure out well is there you know can I do the things the same exact way that somebody else does? To a point, yes. But it's going to be, there's always going to be that little bit of difference because you are the individual. And, you know, the Almighty knits each and every one of us together as individuals. And when we come and unify under His name, that's when things get accomplished. If you need some help <clears throat> coming together or learning how to get your heart and your mind together, visit GiveGodNani.com. Take the, the challenge. You're not challenging the Almighty. You're challenging yourself. Okay? Little bitty things you can do every day. Okay? And, and you begin to change a little bit at a time until you start living the way your creator designed you to live. At the end, you learn to keep going. But it all begins with making a choice. That choice isn't that difficult to make. You can either say, yeah, I need to change my life. I need to repent. I need to change my life. Or you can reject it. It's completely up to you. But I can say this from experience. It's much, much easier when you learn to do things his way and not your own way. Because that is when things begin to turn for you. That's when you begin to realize what he can accomplish through you, not what you can do on your own. Usually this is where I asked Myra if she had anything to add to that because that's really all I had tonight. We need to understand how to discern the information we have so that we're making good decisions and we are making sure that ourselves and our family are safe and cared for. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about the COVID argument. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about a national political argument. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about a, a, a local uh, political argument or a family problem. And it really doesn't matter that much if you're talking about your own personal life. 
your heart and your mind must agree on what is real so that you can make the decisions you need to make to live the best life that you can live. Until Monday, I want to uh, wish everyone many, many blessings. Oh, 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 oh,